Welcome to the Sheboygan County Historical Museum for our April 3rd Saturday program. Uh, we are emphasizing, focusing on the area bakeries. Uh, as an example, we have a nice, beautiful, old-fashioned cookie machine here uh, that was donated to us by the Johnston family. Um, and that is what's going to welcome you to the program today. On top of that, we have several presenters that are here. Uh, you'll start with the Johnston Bakery family, Mary Pearl, one of the daughters of uh, Joe Johnston, the starter of that business, will be here to talk about their bakery. Uh, from there, you will meet um, Greg Gallenberger from the Oostberg Bakery, and next to her will be, uh, excuse me, next to him will be Myra from Myra's Cake. Uh, around the corner, then, you will be able to talk to Fuzzy and Donna, Jacket from Westside Bakery here in Sheboygan, uh, along with the Fredericks family, uh, the whole family. Uh, they have even people coming in from Vermont that are part of the uh, program today. Next to them will be Rick Navis from City Bakery. We also will have Jacob Rake from the Keel Bakery. Uh, and we also have representatives from Miller's Bakery in Plymouth. Uh, several of these have brought samples, so there will be some delicious samples on top of everything. And we are also having a brat fry today uh, on a hard roll and a Johnsonville brat on that hard roll. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy the show and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Ann Pearl. My maiden name is Johnson and my family owns Johnson Bakery in Sheboygan on Superior Avenue. Um, we have been at the location in Sheboygan since 1957. Uh, Johnson's Bakery business started in 1950, originally out in Sheboygan Falls, and then we moved to Sheboygan in 57, and that's where we are still presently right now. Um, right now, my three brothers own and run the bakery, and of us, Girls, there's four, four girls or daughters that um, work there either full time or part time. Um, I have behind me pictures of our bakery and some of my family members. Um, on the table, I have some of the stuff that was at the bakery. Some of it before we moved in that was down in the basement that we had put aside and saved all these years. Um, our, some of the instrument, our tools are wooden and we are not allowed to have anything wooden in the bakery anymore. Um, uh, my, um, uh, my mom and dad originally met when at Molin Bakery. Um, that was in Sheboygan also, and then they started their own business out in Falls in the 50s. Um, Those tools that you got in the uh, table, what were they used for? These here? Yes. Okay, they were from a long time ago when they used the ladies on a cake and maybe put powdered sugar on them and then lift them off and it was um, more of a decoration on a cake. Some of them are the Christmas greetings is what I have. These were in the place when we went, moved in. So I'm um, just kind of hung on to them all these years. Uh, uh, okay. Oh. That is a picture of all my sisters and brothers um, were up in the upper windows. Um, from left to right would be my sister Joanne, then my brother Joe, then um, uh, Bob, then in the middle one is my brother Mike, and then the next one is me. And then the other picture is Judy, John, and Rita, and down below in front of the doorway is my mother kind of pointing up towards us that we had done when we remodeled the store about six, seven years ago. We completely remodeled the front store, making it a bigger 
cafe area for eating and coffee and going back to more or less the turn of the century look um, with the tin ceilings and barn board floors. Um, there's a belt driven fans that are in there. Um, it goes back to what the original building we think might have looked like in 1892. Um, oh, I, don't, I don't see a picture of that. Oh, I have a picture of it. I got it in my book. I'll pull it out and lay it on the table. Okay. Uh, pictures at the top. Um, one on the left is my father. Um, and then the middle one are the three brothers that own it now, Joe, Mike, and John. And then the one on the right is my mother. Um, the other picture over is some of my brothers and sisters and one of my sons. Um, Hi, my name is Greg Gallenberger and I'm the owner of the bakery in Oostburg. The Oostburg Bakery has been in business since 1929. Um, there's been probably about four different families that owned it over the years. It's always been a family owned business. Uh, we really take great pride in what we do. We make all our products from scratch. We, uh, our customers come from all around Sheboygan County because it's been there for a long time, so it is well known. Uh, we make uh, quite a few different items. Our most popular items are uh, cream-filled coffee cakes, and of course hard rolls, because uh, Sheboygan County is uh, well known for its hard rolls, which uh, is part of the reason why I think there are so many bakeries in Sheboygan. Sheboygan does have a, a large number of bakeries for the size of the town. Um, my dad bought the bakery in 1979 and owned it for nine years and then I bought it from him and I've owned it for 25 years. Uh, my dad still comes in and helps out. He's 84 years old now but he still, still enjoys coming to help us out at the bakery. We have probably about 15 employees right now. And as far as the bakeries go in Sheboygan County, we're, we're a smaller one compared to some of the larger ones. But uh, we, we like it that way. We like to stay small. We like to keep it just mainly in the family. And uh, that way we can concentrate more on, on the quality of our products because we can really be more hands-on and we don't have to use quite as many types of machines for making it. We can make it by hand instead of by machine. So. Hi, I'm Myra Stockdick Eichen from Myra's Country Cakes and Catering. We are a full service bakery and catering operation, um, home owned, and I started in 1986. Uh, I was engaged at the time and somebody told me, I, my fiance told me I'd never make it, so I had to prove him wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we specialize in Sheboygan County's first wedding cheesecakes since 1986 and cheesecakes are still our specialty. We have over 56 different flavors of cheesecake at this time and are constantly trying something new. Uh, we do a lot of catering for funerals and our slogan is Sheboygan County's um, 
all your dessert and catering needs from birth to death. Uh, the pictures here are my my mom and I uh, did a lot of the catering. She's been in it from with me from the start. Uh, she passed away in July, so that picture is special to me. The picture on the end is from our um, 25th. Actually, all these are from our 25th anniversary, which we celebrated uh, two year, years ago. Uh, since my mother passed away, my husband has taken over a little bit more with me and, and been helping more with the catering. My father also helps a lot with the catering. I have eight people on staff right now, uh, all part-time. Uh, these are some of the wedding, recent wedding pictures that I've done. Um, right now we're gearing up for, for graduation and the sp spring brides. And we'd love to see anybody that would need our catering or, or cake services come in and give us a call and set up an appointment and we can customize things. We love to do themed type parties. We uh, have done Taste Your Way Around the World parties with different countries and we love doing that kind of thing and customizing to whatever you need price wise and um, according to your budget and your flavor desires. Hi, my name is uh, Rick Navis. I'm the current owner of uh, City Bakery in Sheboygan. I've uh, been there for a little over 25 years. I've been the owner and uh, worked there for probably five or six years, I believe, before that. And uh, bought it from a gentleman named uh, Jim Shufflebottom. Uh, before that, um, it was owned by uh, John Foy, who had it for, I believe, probably around 10 or 15 years. And uh, prior to that, it was owned by uh, a gentleman named uh, Fritz Shrewy, or Frederick Shrewy. And I believe he opened it in 1935 uh, and until probably 1960, early 60s maybe. So. Uh, they still do a lot of, at least the hard rolls are done the same way they've always been done. It's a sponge and dough method, which is you mix a sponge and uh, allow it to ferment for four hours, put it back in the mixer, mix it up and then made up in the hard rolls, and then uh, baked on the uh, brick hearth oven. So, we try to you know, keep some of the old and add some, a lot of new things, so. <laughs> so. so dates back to nineteen thirty five. Nineteen thirty five I believe is when he when he first opened the bakery. Yeah. Before that I believe he worked at Moore's bakery before that, Fritz Shuri did, yeah. Which I believe was on A Street at one time. Yeah. Okay, more is here. I am Jeanette Schutz, and I am a Sterkle. My parents got the bakery shop um, at the... Um, and we've been in that baker shop for a long time. My dad re fixed it all up. He made repairs on it. And um, then we sold it to Fuzzy. I was in fifth grade when we purchased it, and um, I had two brothers. One brother was born in the baker shop, and um, I think my parents were in the baker shop for some 30 years. My dad, uh, I think, was the only one that did ice carvings in town here. He had to go to the ice company to do his ice carvings because it was cold in there. And um, he also did a lot of wedding cakes. And he went to, to school 
I think it's up on a boat in there, is it? Uh, in Chicago, he went to school and he took up some more training in decorating cakes. Some of these pictures are of me standing by the garage doors because the old ones were taken down and these were the new ones. And uh, this is my brother's confirmation. We had to stand in front of the baker shop. There wasn't any other place to stand to have pictures taken. And these were the pictures that he bought. He got rid of the old trucks when we moved in. And uh, these two he, ha he bought. This is the one that was driving that truck. And he had the south side run. And this one had the north side run. And I think if you could look close, my brother's sticking his head out there. And I think my dad is in the window there. <laughs> um, so whenever we got confirmed or graduation or something, we had to go take our pictures in front of the baker shop. It's my brother that was born there. He's, he's now 70, I think. <laughs> this is me when I was younger. I was in high school. And where's my mother and dad? This is my mother and dad. He was the baker. Okay, Hi, my name is Donna Jacket, formerly Donna Hosevar. Um, I'm a Kohler girl, and uh, I found Fuzzy on a, uh, uh, what were you, a blind date. Uh, I'm Fuzzy's second wife, and his first wife died of cancer, and I've been married to him for 26 years. And we've had quite a bumpy ride and a smooth ride, and it's been very exciting being in the bakery business because there's been room in the city for all the bakeries that there were at one time. Um, I don't know what Fuzzy would like to start talking about. I think he'd like to tell you about the bakery. And uh, I have to tell you that he did, he, he, it's a little joke, he did used to wear a sweatshirt that said, I'm Fuzzy the Baker, and on the back it said, and my wife Donna loves my buns. So I hope you see the sense of humor in that. But here is my, here's my husband, Fuzzy. And I still love her buns yet. Anyhow, I'm Fuzzy the Baker. And my real name is Leroy, but very few people that I've known over the years, some of them didn't even know my name was Leroy because, Leroy, because they always call me Fuzzy. And I remember buying the place in 1965 and uh, it was an old bakery and I knew I had to spend a lot of time and money fixing it up. And we did, uh, over the years, we just added every year. We added some more, we added some more, changed things. And till the point we got it that it's uh, it's doing quite well. And uh, the last 48 years, is, I think it's pretty pretty exceptional. Because, you know, some of the bakeries in town have shut down or some of them are still hanging in there yet. And I just, I, I still enjoy going in. I don't physically bake anymore, but I still enjoy going in and overseeing and making sure everything turns out good. Can I interject something here? I was told before I married Fuzzy that this man knew he wanted to be a baker when he was in third grade. That's living a dream for somebody, I think. <laughs> and I, I made it. <laughs> And I'm very happy with it. I still enjoy it. Yeah. I'm Ann Fredericks from Fredericks Bakery. Uh, my husband and my family ran the bakery for many years. I am associated with the bakery because I lived next door to Fredericks Bakery. Uh, when I was a little girl, it was Hirsch Bakery. And the Hirsch family kind of welcomed me into their, their home. Um, so my, my history goes back from Frederick's Bakery to Jasper's Bakery to now, uh, and Frederick's Bakery. My daughter flew in from Vermont with some showpieces, some memorabilia, and she can tell you about this. Angela? 
This is Angela Grenier from Vermont. I'm Angela from King Arthur Flower, and I've made these show pieces for this event today. All of these things are made out 100% out of bread dough. I use tools like X-Acto knives and scissors to cut these wheat shafts, X-Acto knives to cut these things out. Um, we dry them in the oven for hours and hours. I think this piece dried for about 12 hours and then it's perfectly fine to shellac and it can be kept for years. I might add she brought these she brought these on the plane from Vermont yesterday to flew in and they ended up pretty good considering. <laughs> and welcome to the Sheboygan County Museum. Today we are on bakeries. And if you are here now, well I guess you may be not, there's a lot of good munchies here to eat. Right now we are showing you our carrying box from the Sheboygan Baking Company that made the golden crust bread. Now you'll have to forgive me, I'm a little young and I don't know where all of these bakeries were. The one you're seeing now is Molens and my husband over here used to work there when he got out of high school. Didn't you dear? Yes. <laughs> on the bread wrapping and slicing machine. <laughs> Where was Molens? Across the street from the Palladium on New York Avenue. It was next to the Prangy Bakery, which was below ground. Ah, okay. For those that know where that is, that's pretty good. Coming back to the table, these three pages I took out of a 1902 cookbook that had the name of Rust and Hinsey on the front. And when you open the book, this is the cover, when you open the book there was a page in front and a double-sided page in the back of advertising. The rest was recipes and I believe the book was created to maybe be given as complimentary to the customers or maybe sold. Not everyone in these advertisements had bakery and some of them have bakery listed amongst the other things that they sold. So I'm assuming that they weren't technically a bakery but that they sold the item and it was probably made somewhere else. This yellow sheet is a billing from Friedrich's Bakery. Um, this is from 94 where we bought, I think it's some hard rolls. This is the back side of this billing. I thought the wording was pretty good. Speaking of Frederick's Bakery, before Frederick's, it was Hirsch, in the same building, but I've just been found out that when it went from Hirsch's to Frederick's, the city changed the house number of the building. It's still on East Street. This is a, a matchbook cover of Moose. M-U-H-S, it's a bakery that was at 1128 Geely Avenue. The building is still there to this day. The main floor is now a laundromat and the upper level are apartments. And then over here we have Hitzman Bakery, of which I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> Moving over here, 
Let me turn this around so maybe you can read. Clunk. <laughs> this is paper to wrap your loaf of bread. Moore's special is on here. And this piece of, of uh, this item fits on, if you want to turn around, there is a machine here on the floor from Hisense that, and that is about the extent of the collection, or oh, otherwise this one down front, that is Omar Bakery. My husband tells me that after the war, ladies would drive trucks and make home deliveries after the Second World War. But it was all women that drove and walked to the house and delivered the bakery. Don't have that feature in life anymore. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Jared Reck. I am fourth generation Rex Bakery out of Keele, Wisconsin. Um, we are just on the edge of the northern part of Sheboygan County. Um, I've been involved with the baking industry my whole life. I'm 44 years old and I bought the business from my parents. Um, my parents bought the business from their parents and my grandpa bought the business from his great uncle. Um, the business has been in the rec name since 1908. Uh, it has also been a bakery before it was Rex Bakery. It was a bakery that was owned by Henry Fremy. That bakery was started in 1896. So uh, the Rex bought it in 1908 and we've had it ever since. Um, we uh, are a full line uh, retail bakery. We do about 70% of our baking from scratch every day. Um, all of our breads and rolls are made from scratch. Uh, all of our breads and rolls are made daily. Um, we do a, a, f a full line of sweets. We do cakes, pastries, Danish donuts, uh, cookies, and almost everything in between. The only thing we don't really do are wedding cakes. Uh, we do decorated cakes. Um, I went to... Um, Keele High School and graduated in 1987 and after that I went up to Dunwoody Industrial Institute which is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a two-year uh, uh, industrial college and I don't believe it is any longer um, a baking industry college but it is a college for other industries. Um, I graduated from there fourth of my class and I've been involved with Rex Bakery and baking ever since. Um, it's actually something that is just in your blood. Either you like it or you don't like it. It's a lot of hours. The hours are early. Um, that's probably the best part of the job. A lot of people say, how can you say that's the best part of the job? But the best part of the job is starting at 2 or 3 a.m. and being done by 11 or 12 or 1 o'clock every day. So every day of the year, no matter what, even through the winter, you have an afternoon of sunlight at your leisure. So you have a lot of free time all year long during daylight hours, which is something that's very important. Um, gets you out, gets you to enjoy the sunshine. And I think it that lets me have a better attitude when I have sunshine all year long. Um, we, do, um, we do like to have fun at our workplace. Um, without having fun at our workplace, you wouldn't be in this business very long. Um, most of the bakeries that I've been into and, and visit are, are usually the same way. People are pretty upbeat and, and happy and have a good sense of humor. Uh, if you don't, long hours and early hours will, will wear you down. Um, we're just, just happy to be here and happy to be keeping the tradition going. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Michael Mueller, uh, Miller's Bakery from Plymouth. My grandfather started it or bought the bakery around 1900 and stayed in the family until 1969 when we closed it up. We sold the property to the city and today there's a street and parking lot where the building was. 
And on the table here we have a few things. There's a ledger and a little his history of the bakery. And along the walls there we have pictures of our father and grandfather and uh, showing parts of the bakery. And uh, with calendars and well different things and, and of the bakers themselves that were working in the shop. My, my sister Meredith here has she knows a few things about the store. She worked in there a little off and on. <laughs> Occasionally on the weekends when I would be back home I would have to help in the store and they were open early and stayed open all day Saturdays and dad was always insistent that we kept the trays full and that if what didn't get you know run down where there were only a two or three pieces left on it they wanted those full so it looked good and when at the end of the day well then you would have to clean everything up and count the change and the normal closing routine. So. Well that's a little of the history and well I guess we we uh, locked up because it was during the Vietnam War it was hard to get help my father didn't was sick he couldn't work much anymore and we thought it would be the best thing to do so that was the end of it and it was a memorial weekend in 1969 so I guess that's about all unless you have a question or two <laughs>